Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. I'm Kimberly D'Souza in your company. And of course, it's Friday. Um, I'm going to be talking about, you know, making Port of Spain a more resilient city. Yeah. Mayor, good morning. Miss Messiah, morning. good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on the Now Morning Show. Thank, Thank you, you for having me and Mrs. Messiah the, on your show this yeah. morning. It's a wonderful morning for that. It's Friday. Yeah, as, as I just said, it's yes. going to be an amazing yes. day. <laughs> and we have a lot going on today. Of course. Well, let's jump right in then. Yes. I mean, Miss Messiah, I mean, what does the project entail? And I mean, what is the purpose of this project in terms of making Port of Spain a more resilient city? I was going to say, since it's a lovely Friday, it's about making the mayor look good, but ah. then he's already a good looker, so I, I, <laughs> I, I, I can use that line, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is about accelerating the UN 10 essentials to making Port of Spain a resilient city by 2030. So by inference, there is a bit of work to be done still to make Port of Spain a resilient city, and the project entails gathering a number of stakeholders, a number of professionals from academia, from civil society, from government, and looking at what has caused the flooding over the years, what has caused some of the deter deterioration, lack of maintenance in some things, and how do we put an action plan together, commitment from stakeholders to make sure that by 2030 we have a resilient city. And I keep saying of recent, imagine a port of Spain without flooding. Mm. And it's believable, can be done. Good. That's what it is about. Nice. It, briefly and in a nutshell. <laughs> I like how you say briefly. Now, May, I'm going to toss to you. I mean, how important is such a project like this for the city of Port of Spain? Well, first of all, let me say thank you to Ms. Messiah and her Habitat for Humanity, USAID, and all the stakeholders that have gotten involved to really help come together to discuss and to, to develop an action plan for the city of Port of Spain on the whole. So. It's, a, it's a, a remarkable moment for the city of Port of Spain as we are in the, 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 the beginning of revitalization. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a city that, is not, that has not died. It's a city that's developing. And why is it important? Because you have seen when there's rainfall in the hills of Maraval or the hills of St. Anne's, what happens to Port of Spain. This is our capital city. And imagine that, that the capital city has to stop when there's floods. And uh, we have to be able to deal with that. There's an, there was an earthquake the other day, and uh, we, we were quite lucky at the end, of, the end of it. But you could imagine if it was worse, how, what kind of impact it would have been on the city of Port of Spain mm. and for the development and the economy and livelihood of the people who live and work and, and, and travel through Port of Spain. So talking about being a resilient city is really about being resilient against the elements that can affect the city and affect the everyday way of life and the way in which people operate. And we want to be able to, to be a better Trinidad, a better Port of Spain has to, has to, has to be that impetus and mm -hmm. has to be able to, to drive the dynamic. So resilient, being a resilient city is very, very important to the city of Port of Spain and to the Trinidad and Tobago and the city and the, co the economy and everything. As a whole. Yes, <laughs> as a whole. Yes. Now, Ms. Messiah, I mean, um, this project, was it rolled out in phases? Is the first phase complete? Are we moving on to the second one? How is it going to roll out? So thank you for that question. Mm. This project started as a dream, and then it became a reality. It's phase one, but it's the completion of that phase one, and it ends on the 31st of March. The expectation on this phase one is to deliver an action plan to his worship, the mayor, and we will do so at nine o'clock. I actually have the mayor for the whole day today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I feel kidnapped, <laughs> but so, in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> <laughs> so we, in, in this phase one, we see the completion of this action plan. It was funded by USAID, the Bureau of Humanitarian um, Assistance, and we are hoping that we can approach them again and other stakeholders, private sector, other international funding agencies to look at phase two, which would be the implementation. And I think his worship said there may be phase three, which is pan yes. in Port of Spain. Pan in Port of Spain. Ah. <laughs> pan in Port of Spain. I know Mia loves his pan. We were just joking yes. about that offset. <laughs> yes, exactly. When she said phase two, yeah. I said, well, you know, it, it's, it's right here in the city. Right. Now, I'm not sure if Ms. Messiah or even you, uh, Mia, would like to take this question, but there's a public engagement activity happening in the Port of Spain city today. Yes, that's right, yeah. in Woodford Square. And um, 
Well, Miss Masai can talk <laughs> a little bit sure. more about it because she's very um, Akura. Ah, with all that's going on. Right. So between 9 and 11, we're presenting, the consultants are presenting to all of the task force and the stakeholders the action plan. Between 9 and 11, that's a close um, meeting. But between 12 and 2, we're out in the promenade. Mm. And we're telling the public what the content of that action plan is, a little bit of light entertainment. And we're hoping that people will also sign up on the shelter campaign, which is part of the awareness um, for the Port of Spain project. OK, so it's a little bit about the shelter campaign. I think there's a play on the words, right? Yes, shelter starting with the first three letters of she. It's a woman empowerment campaign. And we're asking people to sign on to support Habitat in the initiative and support His Worship the Mayor in this initiative, where we're saying, let's empower women, especially vulnerable women, to own land. Mm. I've been having lots of flag on it, um, Mr. Martinez. Mm. People are asking, so men are not entitled to own land? Mm. Um, yes, we are, but I'm just saying at this time, maybe because we're celebrating um, International Women's Day in this month and we're singling out the women, I'm saying, this is the time, let's put some concentrated focus, government developments, private sector, make land available to vulnerable women. If we do that, we will leaps and bounds increase our economic productivity. Just put land in the hand of women and see the difference. <laughs> when she wins, he wins. He wins. Ah, I like that. <laughs> Love That's it. a very good time. We can hashtag that to Nomea. <laughs> Nomea, I mean, she mentioned that something is happening on the promenade. So is it then that the promenade is open now? Yes, actually the promenade was open yesterday at 9 a.m. and um, we got the police to move the barriers. And you would, you would not imagine what the promenade looked like just after that. People were so excited. They were ecstatic mm -hmm. about the fact that, you know, I didn't realize people loved the promenade so much. They you do. Know? And um, uh, the, the fact that it was closed, it really disappointed a lot of people. So <laughs> the fact that it's open now, it got a chance to breathe, actually. Yes. And I, I, I was, I, when I looked around and I saw the plants and the, the, the greenery of it and, uh, and everything was coming together so nicely. And I saw people dancing on the promenade at one stage. So, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that we have gotten to this stage, and I hope that we can get, as the Prime Minister indicated, we can get to that level of normalcy very quickly, and that we protect, continue to protect ourselves, make sure because you never know if there's another wave coming or anything like that, or you know, there, there could be a spike here or a spike there. But the thing about it is that we have to really get back to developing and ensuring that the economy has a chance to, to, to give us that opportunity to grow and develop again. We were going so well and we were developing, you know, we were, because we, the, the country was in uh, economic crisis to some extent, but we have passed, we had passed that and then COVID came yeah. and it, it, it really affected us in, a, in and, and the whole world as a matter of fact. However, we, we have a chance to breathe now, and, uh, and hopefully we are the end of the pandemic, and some people call it the endemic. <laughs> <you know? laughs> well, be but, careful, like as Minister Dial Singh is saying, we're not there yet, yeah, we're not there yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, I said, yes. we, 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 we're seeing positive yes. signs, yes. you know. Yes. The, uh, you know, when you look at the, the sky and you say, well, okay, rain is coming, well, you're seeing <laughs> some sun is coming. <laughs> well, let's, let's look at let's it from hope. that point yes. of view. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, Ms. Messiah, we have about maybe about a minute left. Any uh, closing thoughts you want to give us before we, we actually close? Well, I first of all, we say thank you for having us this morning. And I want to say to the listeners in Trinidad and Tobago, that it's very important that we begin to be responsible, even with how we live, Thereafter, let's let's call it beginning of post-COVID. We're speaking hope into being. Let's yes. continue to be responsible. Let's continue not to be up in one another's face. You know, it's just, it's COVID is still very real and very there. But also, can we be responsible with how we deal with our garbage? Let's be responsible with how we build our homes. Stop cutting down the hillsides. Yes, you need to live. But can we be responsible with how we do it? Can we make sure that when we're doing our construction that we build better and safer? Can we make sure we put on hurricane straps on our roofs? Simple things. And we're out there, Habitat for Humanity is out there teaching and uh, informing the public. Continue to go on our platforms, sign on, like, be engaged, and you get a lot of opportunity to learn what you should do as a responsible citizen, especially as it relates to Port of Spain. 
because we really want to make it a re resilient city by 2030. And you know, in, in becoming a resilient city, it's not just the stakeholders of institutions or people who are very interested. It really involves every single one of us, mm -hmm. the, or every member of the citizenry of Trinidad and Tobago is involved in making Port of Spain, which will ultimately make Trinidad a resilient place. It's important to all of us because when we do good, we, uh, it ultimately passes on and, we, and it becomes infectious and we start to build and grow and develop. And that's, we got to do it before 2030. So at the end of the day, we have to work together. Great. <laughs> Mayor Joel Martinez, Miss Jennifer Messiah, thank you so much for joining us here on the Now Morning Show. And I mean, there's nothing much for me to say again. I think Mayor wrapped it up so quickly. So stay with us on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Yeah, yeah.